Hi everyone, it's Nina Yang with Waffle Flower Craft. This is day one of our April release. We'll have two stamp sets and two die sets to share with you today. And we'll have one video for each product. And we're starting with our Dolly Circle stamp set. Before I get into our stamping today, I want to talk a little bit more about our idea sheets. We have one idea sheet for each stamp set. And if you print them out in 7 by 7 inches in a Word document, whichever software you want to use, you can get the actual stamp size as the reference card. So you can keep one close by and you can always refer to it if run out of ideas. You can find them in the introduction post linked below or on our product page. So my first card is going to be really simple. It's just the three dolly squares stamped on the front of the card. Um, I'm having my top folding A2 size card. And for bigger stamps like this dolly, I usually will just put the um, stamp facing up on the desk and put the paper on top of the stamp to get an even, um, even coverage. Well, to get a crisp image that like sometimes when the stamp is too big, you'll miss part of the center that will not stamp. So this is the way to avoid that. Okay, so I press the paper down and about one third from the bottom. And I'm always keeping one of my hand on the stamp and the paper and I'm just using the scrap so I don't get my fingers dirty. So just always keep at least one hand on it so you can make sure that the paper doesn't shift while you change pressure and trying to press in different area. Okay, so I'm quickly cleaning it up. I'm switching to a different color. Um, this is color number two. It's our fresh grass. Before I ink the stamp up, I can actually use the stamp and rotate it to see where I want it to be positioned. And then I can only ink up that part of the stamp to stamp onto the cut front. So I'm only inking up part of the stamp set and I'll show you how to make a position that will not affect the others. So right here, use your fingers and the reference. So you will not, you sort of know where the stamp will be while you stamp it down since your the paper is facing down and you cannot see the front. Okay, ta-da! And that's our second dolly. We're going to do a third dolly on the top. I didn't ink up the whole dolly this time, but I would recommend if you're do making the same kind of card, I would recommend that you ink up the whole dolly so you can have a beautiful um, dolly, well, on the back too, okay? So use your fingers and reference again. Uh, yeah, I know, I was, <laughs> I was hesitating and I went lazy, okay? So here's my fingers and reference and we press down the cut onto the stamp and press with always keep part of your hand on the stamp to prevent the paper from shifting. Okay, very nice. Um, we're ready to fold down the card and stamp the sentiment. Make sure that you clean your stamps every time after use. So later you can put them on, on your card to help you decide the position of it. And I'm just trying to decide a small sentiment to go with it. and. Since every card is kind of has this, well, it's imperfection, right? So I kind of need something on the top right hand corner of the smile on this card instead of the one as you see on the left hand corner that I stamp it on the right hand side. So I'm going to put it on top and to take up the space so it looks like everything's designed to be that way. Even pressure and lift up. Nice, right? Well, actually, if I could see it better, I'll probably move the whole sentiment to the right a little bit more. And since my ink pad is a little dry, the sentiment is not totally solid black. So I just went back in and used a black marker to fill up the space. No one will notice it. They will just think your card is perfect. <laughs> At least that's what I'm telling myself. Okay, we're done with our first card. Easy, right? Now I'm just using my bone folder to give the card a crisp fold. Easy, right? Okay, let's move on to our second card. 
I want to use the scallop border and the little sentiment banner from the Dolly Circle stamp set on my second card. And here's the scallop border stamp. It's straight on the stamp set, but this is why I love photopolymer stamps. You can bend the borders, especially borders and sentiments. They're so easy to bend, to curve them a little bit, so you can get more options for them and more possibilities. Okay. So I ended up, I'm going to stamp a scene, like the clouds are merging from right to the front and then stamp a sentiment. So I'm just using part of the border to stamp the top of the cloud. Um, I think I stamped, I pressed a little too hard on the left, the end. So um, it's too thick, but that's okay. Just turn around and <laughs> we can use the other side of the paper as the card front. Okay, okay, that's much better. So I'll, I'm going to fast forward the next part of the video since it's just me playing with the position and we'll get back when I'm getting ready to see more t to share more tips. Well, the more tips came pretty quickly, right? Um, okay, so here's a quick tip that um, we have, I want to curve the cloud a little bit more to make it look more realistic, like to give it, the, to give the cloud a more variety in the shapes. So I'm curving it a little bit more on the Friskers stamp press. This way I have a bigger area to bang the shape. And let's continue with our fast forward mode. Now, I didn't plan how my car is going to be. I just know that I'm going to stamp some clouds first. So I stamped the sentiment and cut it out on a separate piece of paper so it can help me decide where I want to put it. And that's when I found out that I have the ink pen sitting on the side and it sort of stains the, uh, the right hand side of the clouds. I decided to cut the clouds out because it kind of looks too plain on this car with both the sentiment and the clouds on the same layer and um, um, I don't know it just it doesn't look I need something to help me ground the card so in the next few minutes I've been cutting the clouds and the sentiment out from the previous car front and now we're going to use a piece of blue cardstock to mount these clouds to it and before I do that <laughs> I'm going to cut off the side that the ink pen has stained. Well, I still got a little smudge over there, but well, you probably couldn't see in the video, but we'll see what we can do in the, uh, when we're getting ready to finish the card. And here is a magically appeared blue cardstock. Um, it's an A2 size type of folding card. And I'm also playing with the cloud position and see whether it look better, like slightly at an angle, but I decided to keep it the way it is. And here is another quick tip to mount the uh, a, a layer to the corner of the cut front. You just uh, put the cut front, the corner that you want it to be, against the corner of the scoring board, and then you have a perfect lined up corner. After I decide where I want to put the sentiment, I decided that the sentiment uh, banner looks too plain, being white. So I'm just using a Copic marker Y17 to uh, to color it in with the yellow marker and then I'm stamping the sentiment once again on top of what I have stamped before because it's clear stamp I can see exactly where I'm stamping even if it has a little double image that's okay right okay I'm still playing with the position and I'm going to quickly adhere the stuff together and I will finish the card
I'm using some enamel dots to finish the card to give it a fun look and we're moving on to our third card. The third card came to me by accident. So I was trying to stamp those scallop borders on the cap front and trying to give it a very soft feminine look but then uh, I made a mistake. See the purple thing? It doesn't look very nice. So um, before I move on to actual card, uh, the actual third card, I want to show you how easily it is to add those little tiny details to the scallop borders to make it into um, like a, a crochet border to give it a more soft, warm look. Step. Easy, right? Okay, so now let's move on to our third card. So I cut off the purple part and backed up the little uh, scalp borders with a pink cardstock and it looks really good. But I'm going to use a little twine bow image and to make it into a dress. So um, I tried on this card but it looks a little too busy and the detail. I ended up making a new card with just the twine bows. But before I do that, I'm going to draw a high heel. <laughs> well, as you can tell, I'm not very good at hand drawing, right? But that's okay. Remember, this is just to have fun. I think having a little shoe image there will really enhance the feel of the beautiful gown that's swaying, you know, and your feet. And I know exactly what I want to use as a sentiment for this card. Um, okay, so I just cutting the <laughs> the high heel out. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Uh, now I have stamped another scallop border with just the twine bow as the essence. I'm thinking that we have two finishes to finish this card. We can adhere the pink cardstock on the front or on the inside of the card. They'll both look good. Uh, but since I'm going to photograph this part, I'm going to adhere the pink cardstock on the front of the card. By doing so, I first light up everything and then put adhesive on the cuff front and then press the cuff front back down. This way I can make sure everything is lined up. And I know my pink cut stack is a little too um, big, too wide. So I'm just trimming it off so everything is nice and neat. All right, okay. Scissors will fix anything. <laughs> Okay, so guess what sentiment I'm going to use from the Dolly Circle stamp set? We have a sentiment that says, it's a new beginning. I think it would be a great card to give at weddings. Okay, now we have all three of our introduction cards done. I had so much fun making these three cards. They're all clean and simple. I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to check out our blog post for giveaways and more inspiration from our design team. And if you're looking for more product ideas, please click on the videos for the other products we're going to introduce today. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. Bye!